Sherlock Holmes crimes and punishments. Um, we're here, obviously, as always, with Watson um, at Kew Gardens because we have to go and speak to the suspects um, about the case. So they've got to say for them to start with Mark Damish. Um, okay. What is your opinion of Albert as a student of botany? He's useless. I often tell him so, and I can only give him cleaning tasks. Botany is not his life's work, and his father well knew it. He was furious about it. He was? Oh, yes. He forced his son to work here, and he never missed an opportunity to criticize him publicly. Are you able to elaborate on that? Well, for example, with our last exhibition here, Mr. Dunn had Albert make a presentation speech. But then, while the lad was speaking, Mr. Dunn interrupted him, asking him difficult questions, making him look like a failure. It was with the intention of making a fool of him, Mr. Holmes. Mr. That Holmes. must have been terribly humiliating. Yes, he was crushed, and he had to leave. Everybody was making fun of poor Albert. That is, except for Miss Margaret White, who is such a nice lady and who always takes pity on Albert. It's interesting then, because maybe his dad set him out the dinner like an idiot because he was competing for Margaret White's affection. You That's mentioned a Miss White. Would you tell us more about her? She is a student who works here part-time. She is quite charming indeed. She possesses a great talent for botany. You should take a look at some of her experiments that she carried out in the laboratory. Ah, if only she were not so naive. Why naive? The way she used to flutter around Mr. Montague Dunn. And he, why, he couldn't help but be flattered by all her attention. How could an intelligent woman such as Miss White not see through his game? I can only scratch my head and wonder. Because of money. Mr. Hamish, was someone from your family connected with Kew Gardens? Family? No. I'm the only one with a passion for botany. The photo. Uh, photograph with father. I do not think so. This photograph of you and your father at Kew Gardens suggests the opposite. Ah, but you have no right to. Do tell us more about your father. <laughs> he was the indeed the down. greatest botanist of his time in the British Empire. He worked together with Montague Dunn until the end of his life. He brought me in at the age of 12. Did he get on well with Mr. Dunn? No, oh, I couldn't say that. They expanded Kew Gardens together, that was all. And it was all my father's work. But Dunn always lived the high life. So Mr. Dunn was not helping your father? Oh, yes. He provided the financial support. And as far as he was concerned, that fulfilled his role. But the worst of it was, he declared himself as the master of Kew Gardens. Fame meant nothing to my father. So it was easy for Mr. Dunn to take all the credit. Interesting. Are you aware of the Divine Syndicate? The Divine what? Is this a joke? No, I am quite serious. What a ridiculous name. Anyway, I have never heard of this syndicate. Okay. Four dunks death. Can you tell me if you saw Mr. Montague Dunn on the day of his death? Yes, of course. I met him, and we went to see Albert, his son, at around half past nine. He appeared quite calm. Your activity at the bottom. What were you doing on the morning of the accident? After paying multiple visits to Albert, I had a little talk with Miss White. Then I returned to my desk to complete some paperwork. Suddenly, I observed that Mr. Dunn was not feeling well, so I ran immediately to fetch Albert. I clearly remember that it was around half past ten, for I was late that morning. Thank you, Mr. Hamish. We shall continue our investigation. Okay, interesting. So... He kind of has a motive there, in so much as his father was kind of shunned. But then again, I don't know, he doesn't seem to be the materialistic one either. I think he just disliked uh, the... I don't know if maybe... Oh, here we go. Your father's death does seem highly suspicious. 
What were your movements here on that day? Suspicious. Well, I was working in the seed house, taking care of uh, Lysa, but something or, or Lear uh, Pontus or... No, wait. Ah, oh, these Latin names. I spent so many hours trying to memorize them. <laughs> Did you see your father that day? Yes. He came here with Mr. Hamish for his weekly visit. There was nothing unusual about that. And then? Nothing. They stepped out to the backyard. It was perhaps 20 minutes before 10 o'clock. Then about 10 minutes later, I saw my father heading for the dry tropics room while Mr. Hamish returned here. And Mr. Hamish and Miss White, what were they both doing that morning? Mr. Hamish visited me a couple of times. I also saw him returning from talking with Miss White, and that was at 10 minutes past 10. But then he ran back here to me to tell me that my father was feeling unwell. We hurried across to the water lily room, and I found my father lying dead on the floor. Oh, my God. I perceive that you are passionate about the Royal Navy. Passion? No, not really. I like ships, that is all. Are you quite sure? You do not seem to be so interested in plants. <laughs> it's difficult, that's all. My future is here. It has never been about anything else. And yet, I know that yes, the Royal that was what Naval I wanted to say. I was hoping that was what it was. Ah, oh, you truly are as clever as they say. Yes, that's correct. And in fact, my father was strongly against the idea. He did his best to ruin my plans, although I almost did succeed. But my dreams were shattered, Mr. Holmes. Okay, motive for him to then. Tell me, have you ever heard of the Divine Syndicate? No, I cannot say that I have. Okay. Thank you, young man. We shall see you again soon. We need to go and speak to Miss White, I think. Who's in the seed house, I believe. Is the seed knows the nursery. Uh, I think we can go through here, though. Let's get into the seed house. Okay, I might be wrong. <laughs> there it is. Can you tell me what Mr. Dunn was doing upon the day of his death? I can, but there is nothing very special to say. I was in the laboratory when I saw Mr. Dunn heading towards me. Tuesday is the day of his weekly visit. It was supposed to be at nine, but he was ten minutes late, as usual. And then? Well, he came in to say good morning. Then I saw him spend two or three minutes by the plants outside the laboratory. After that, he ran out in the direction of the nursery, where Mr. Hamish was working. He was always in a rush during the inspection, you see. I would pity anyone who stood in his way. And that was the last time you saw him? Yes. I stayed in the laboratory until 20 minutes to 11, when I heard the cries of Albert and Mr. Hamish from the large glass house. I joined them as soon as I could, for I knew that something must be very wrong. What exactly were you doing in the laboratory? I was recording an experiment for my thesis. I only stopped my work once when Mr. Hamish visited me briefly around 10 o'clock. But you say you were recording an experiment when the tragedy occurred. Might I listen to the role? Oh, certainly. Please do. You will find it in the laboratory. It is number 320. The Divine Syndicate. Does that name mean anything to you, by any chance? Not at all. But it is a very pretty name. Uh, thank you, miss. Okay. Sometime later. Everyone has gone, Holmes. The way is clear. Oh, okay.
was in her. Oh no, do you think it was in the seed house? 320, I need. Okay. Time for another jog, Holmes. This is a pretty long, uh, pretty long one. I will say that much. And I'm still actually have no idea. I literally have no idea who did this. It could be any one of them. First of all, I need to visit the colonial collection room to see how those caterpillars oh, are okay. onto the deadly plants. Thanks, Holmes. <laughs> appreciate it. Appreciate it. the tip there. Because I did not know what I was doing. And I also can't find this experiment thing, although it doesn't say I need to find it. But it probably would be useful, right? strange because I can hear the like bird sounds and things like that here and then I can also hear them outside <laughs> my uh, outside of my window as well When Montague Dunn was standing close by the plants, the caterpillars were released and caused the deadly spores to activate. Panicking and likely already half asphyxiated, Montague Dunn started back and knocked over the bust. He rushed to the door, but it was locked. He had to force it open with his shoulder. We already know the outcome. Montague Dunn collapsed and died not far from the pool. Well, it is time to perform our experiments on the ventilation system. Okay. Okay. The caterpillars could only fall from the ventilation duct. Our caterpillars are in place. I'll activate the ventilation system so that they fall down. <laughs> Watson, stay here and observe. All right, Holmes. Right onto Watson. These windows were perfectly cleaned. Okay. Let's go to the ventilation system. Uh, let's go this way, I guess. So I think it might be the woman now because she said she was in the laboratory, which I think I believe has a good view of that, and she would know when to drop the caterpillars down. She was in, if not, then it might be mine, Hamish. 
off. The engine cannot be started whilst the transmission is active. Okay, fine. The engine has started. The ventilation system is working. Okay. That's the duct there. Let's go back. Let's go see what's see if he's got those caterpillars falling on his head. Now we need to see if we can activate the fans from Mr. Hamish's and Albert's space. Okay, thanks. Thanks, because I'm really struggling at the minute, Watson. <laughs> so I'm glad you just, uh, just told me about that. Interior of the colonial collection room from this window. Okay. Uh. Ah. Excellent. This ventilation fan is working. Let us see if I can activate the other one. Before I activate the fan, I need to check if the interior of the Colonial Collection Room can be seen from here. From here, we are unable to see okay, the interior of the so Colonial Collection Room. Why. Okay. Perfect. Now I just need to find Watson to check the result. All over you. It works perfectly. <laughs> Bravo. Now, if you could just help me to get rid of these caterpillars. Perfect. Now we know how the murder of Montague Dunn was carried out by activating both. Oh, Albert and she said and Hamish Mr. came Hamish's and spoke to her. It's Hamish. But only from Mr. Hamish's workplace would it be possible to see when Montague Dunn entered the colonial collection room. Ah, uh, it's Hamish. It must be Hamish because she said that he came in to see her, I believe. So he must have turned the fan on there. When he came in to see her, and then he waited. Okay, I think this is all beginning to make sense.
Let's go to Scotland Yard. I think it was Hamish though. I don't think it was the syndicate. Because she said that um, he came in to see her at 1040. Um, evidence. Okay. Part of the statue of sculpture, we still haven't found that. Mask and plants. We went green, so I think that means that we found everything that we needed to. Don't stand on a rake. A la Sideshow Bob. <laughs> uh, okay.
This is one of the outlets of the ventilation system. Curious if the marble that we found will fit this place. Here it is. The marble fragment that we found in the colonial collection room is what they have in common. It is a bust of Montague Dunn. This recording seems very long. It is unnecessary to listen to all of it. Miss White was in the laboratory, as she told us. Okay. Okay. So she was in there. So it was definitely Martin Hamish. Because I, I, Albert does not possess the intelligence to, be, to know that. So it had to be Hamish. I believe that Martin Hamish is guilty of the murder of Montague Dunn. Aha! I knew it! I'll send a letter around to arrest him. Very good. I shall Didn't wait even for ask him. for any reason why. He's just like a Sherlock Holmes says so then. I guess that must be why, right? Martin Hamish is in the large glass house. There's no need to hurry. <laughs> Why is there no need to hurry? Um, where's the large glass house? I guess he means in... in here. Strong. 
Martin Hamish is in the large glass house. There's no need to hurry. Mr. Holmes? I, I just love the way there's like no explanation needed. Also, I love the way I can't get around there now. Uh, okay, there we go. Got stuck on something. Um, what? Can't say Watson. Don't make me make caterpillars fall on you again. Oh. Holmes, my God. Yes. Our messing around with the ventilation system didn't go unnoticed. Mr. Hamish realized that we knew. I didn't expect that. Inspector, could you arrange the body, please? I should like to examine it. Examine Martin Hamish. Oh. Martin Hamish's letter. Life has become a living hell. I find out Beryl done deserve to die, but I cannot forgive myself for having his blood upon my hands. We Hamish's seem to have always fallen victim to our circumstances, and I find myself to be no exception. I must atone, and I shall do so here and now. Farewell. Holmes, his left shoe is unique. This anomaly is often a characteristic of... A club foot. Bravo, Watson. That is the key element of this case. Why is that key element of the case? Neighbors to run due to the tiger or torsion was comfort, therefore, we should find that if he had sufficient time to lock the door of the colonial collection room and activate the ventilation system, did he have an accomplice? Oh, thoughts of the straw discuss with the straw the possible impact of new clues found on the body of my neighbors. It ain't over, it ain't over. The mark around the neck is very visible. He died instantly. Lestrade. It ain't over, buddy. I think it was Miss White who helped him then. Something about this rings very oddly. Why do you say that, Mr. Holmes? Why? Because of Mr. Hamish's club foot. Oh, I deserve to be kicked from here to Charing Cross. I should have noticed it. But, Mr. Holmes, I can't see why. No, I don't suppose you do. You must recall that Mr. Dunn was locked inside the colonial collection room by the murderer. If it was Mr. Hamish, he would have had to run up to his workplace to trigger the fan situated above it, taking into consideration the condition of his foot. Well, it is still possible. Perhaps, but it is rather strange that such a person as Mr. Hamish decided to base his plan on the speed of his gait. You mean to say that somebody helped him? So the suicide is questionable? Correct. Mr. Hamish accuses only himself in his letter, and so the investigation stops. Possibly an accomplice, then? That idea had not occurred to me, Mr. Holmes. That's because you're an idiot, I have another Lestrade. idea, Inspector. Thanks to the testimony that we have collected, we are able to rebuild the events as they took place that day. With a timeline, such as we did in the Jack the Ripper case. Precisely. The map at the entrance of Kew Gardens should help us with our timeline. Okay. Let us analyze the facts oh of God. so that we may recreate the events of that morning. When did this become so complicated? Okay.
Let us summarize. Montague Dunn was poisoned inside the colonial collection room. He forced open the door, which means that someone locked him inside there at 10.20. Okay. Martin Hamish was last seen at 10.10. 10. This means that he has approximately 10 minutes to lock the door of the colonial collection room. Given that he was club-footed, it is doubtful. Albert also has 10 minutes to lock the door of the Colonial Collection Room, which is quite enough oh, time. Albert. Miss White was last seen at 10 o'clock, which means that she had approximately 20 minutes to lock the door. More than enough time. Interesting. Perfect, Watson. Now, let us ascertain who assisted Martin Hamish in killing Montague Dunn. Cylinder records. Okay, we've done all that. I'm going. I'm going for this. I'm going for it. Miss White's a dangerous woman, very capable of carrying out an elaborate murder for monetary gain. She flirted with Dunn's son Albert and later pushed my name to a suicide. She deserves the rope. Miss White's dead. obvious, Watson. Just use your brain. I am using it. I do use it. Now that the rope has tightened around Martin Hamish, Miss White must act to erase all traces of her implication. After the suicide of her accomplice, there is one final trace remaining. The deadly plants of the Divine Syndicate. She will be there. Very good. Shall we go? Just one moment. Now listen to me, Watson. I shall see her alone. You will conceal yourself behind her. Quietly. Whatever are you planning? 
Nothing spectacular. The impulses of women have always been a mystery to me. But she is a bold one, and so we must be cautious. Yes, we All must. Right? You can count on me, Holmes. Okay. Mr. Holmes. I'm ready for the old quick time stuff. You do not seem surprised, Miss White. Well, I was expecting you. Not for too long, I believe. So please tell me, as it is still unclear, who planned the murder? Was it you? You were wrong, Mr. Holmes. It was Martin Hamish, then. You managed to convince him to take on a more prominent role. <laughs> you could not be further from the truth. You think that you can fool me? You don't care what I think. It is difficult to care about someone who is capable of pushing a man to his suicide. It is over, Miss White. The police will be here any minute. Over? Perhaps one moment you are here, and the next, you are on the other side. The other side? No! Stop! No. What's it, Shooter? I beg you not to do this, Miss White. Don't come any closer. Watson. Please remain calm. We can help you. Not one step further. Don't try to stop me. Stop this foolishness. You cannot truly want Do something, Watson. No, it's too late. Done, Watson. She was not faking. Miss White, you have no right to take uh, your own life. Dr. Watson? Will you just save me? Or worse? Oh dear. Okay, this found. Conclusion wise, accomplished in death, Miss White. Okay, we did find it and we got the conclusion. Damn it, yes. God, I just condemn everybody. 91% be resolved the same way, 75% made the same old choice. Okay. Very happy with that. Very happy with that. That's awesome. That's awesome. Where are you going, Holmes? Have you been invited somewhere? We have been invited, Watson. We have? Where to? To the Baker Street Irregulars annual dinner. They sent us an invitation. It is on the table. A dinner? How could those street urchins afford anything like that? I can't understand your interest in them, Holmes. They're dirty. They wouldn't hesitate to steal your wallet. They... Watson, you should be excited. It is a secret dinner. Its location changes every year. Read the menu. Sounds mouth-watering. All right. We, the secret police of Baker Street, invite you, Sherlock Holmes, and Dr. Watson to our annual <laughs> dinner. Menu, entree, frozen rat head salad. Is, is this a joke? Not at all. Pray continue. Main course. Sow's udder in Danny Nutcracker's way. <laughs> ah, sounds disgusting. <laughs> Hedgehog awesome. goulash. Oh, Jesus. Street turnips in homemade juice. <laughs> and it goes on. Ah, I can hear them on the stairs now. Well, we can't go there. We can't eat that. Watson, you'll hurt the feelings of those poor children. We have to go. Oh, Mr. Holmes. It is fine, Mrs. Hudson. Mr. Holmes! Wiggins, Dr. Watson is getting ready. He will be delighted to join us. You don't look well, my young man. Is there something wrong? Don't tell me the dinner is cancelled. Mr. Holmes, it's my brother, Leighton. He's in a prison cell. They say he's killed two men. You have to help us, Mr. Holmes, because I know he didn't do it. Where is he now? From what I've heard, they took him to the yard, and they gave him a good beating already. You know what they're like? They'll hang him. They won't look any further. Holmes, we have to help him. 
and forget about the dinner? Wiggins, I'll take the case. <laughs> You're fantastic, Mr. Holmes. I'll be waiting for you at the crime scene. You'll be there, right? It's on Half Moon Street in Whitechapel. Very well. Very well. But, ladies and gentlemen, we will save that for next time. Because, uh, for now, thank you so much for watching, as always. It's been my pleasure. And next time, we'll take on the, uh, the case of Wiggins.